Hello YouTube. Um, I'm just producing a, a, a hopefully quick video um, on how I'm dealing with my emergency uh, electrical needs. Um, I just purchased a uh, Generac GP6500 generator hoping to in, in an emergency power my whole house. Um, I've also have used in the past my uh, my RV, which has a, a 30 amp uh, generator, 4,000 watts, and then also in here, if you can see it, I have a small Champion 3100 generator, and I connect through um, a 30 amp RV uh, receptacle uh, that I normally power the RV, which I'm currently doing right now. And, and then in the, f the, the front of my house, on the power pole around the corner there, you can see the, the uh, pole jutting up front. I also have a 30 amp RV receptacle and I wired in a 50 amp RV receptacle. And that's how I will be uh, back feeding the house. So, uh, uh, let me show you in the front box uh, what I did and, and how I power my house. Okay, this is the uh, the main power jun junction box in the front of the house. We were earlier on the shed in the back side, but I'll show you what I've done. Um, actually, to get the uh, to get the uh, RV plugs, the 30 amp RV plugs, to function again, you have two two legs of power coming in. You got a uh, and these are hot, so don't touch them. If you're not an electrician, don't do this. Caveat is I am not an electrician. Uh, I'm not recommending any of this. This, uh, this is just merely what I've done. And now you have two hot legs coming in from the utility. A pole here, a pole here. Now, uh, this top breaker now that powers the uh, the back shed with the RV plug in it and then the 30 amp below it actually is on a, a 30 amp RV receptacle here to get things inside to work because with a single pole input you're only getting half half of your outlets or half of, of your fuse box is working or breaker box I'm sorry so I had to, to flop those around so that I can keep the generator off the back shed, the noise in the back, and to keep that back there, but working the circuits that I needed in the house. Well, so that, that I can power the house with the RV um, and also with the, the small champion generator, well, and the big one as well. Um, but once I got the, the whole house, or the concept that I want to power the whole house, I wired in uh, a 50 amp breaker here and a receptacle, a, a regular RV uh, receptacle here. Now if you wanted to do it properly, back feeding house, they really want you to put a uh, a bypass switch where you would have your generator uh, circuit here and you, you'd put a plate that would slide so if the, the power was on you couldn't p power on the generator breakers. Uh, again, I'm only using this as uh, an emergency and also as you can see I don't have much space in my box to, to put uh, uh, a two two breaker pole in there I, and also I want to keep the functionality of my RV outlets uh, during regular use so I am going to back feed um, through through these out those outlets the 50 amp with the the big generator and also the two smaller the the RV 4000 watt RV generator and then my 3100 watt champion portable generator 
Now, my, my thinking is, I have three generators, but in a sustained power outage situation and availability of gas to power all this, um, I, can, I can use the gas on hand, and if I can't resupply it, then I just <laughs> go from generator to generator and, and able to keep the house warm and uh, some comfort features going. So um, now I'm going to actually hook up, simulate a power outage and show you my process um, to safely do this. Again, I'm not recommending this. I'm just sh showing you what I, I'm doing. And, and if you're not comfortable uh, getting inside of an electrical box, by all means, hire a professional. Okay, now I'm going to simulate a power outage. So I'm going to turn off the main and I'll turn everything off. And then I'll go out back and I'm going to start up the Generac generator and let it warm up. Once it's warmed up, then we'll come and we'll First of all, throw the breaker on on the generator, and then also we'll power this receptacle here. We're disconnected from the main. When you're back feeding, you would want to never have it connected to the main, even with power out. If you have the main on, you can be back feeding up to the utilities and uh, possibly cause harm to any line worker that might be trying to restore your power. So. Always, 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 when you're back feeding, have the main off, even if there is no power. So let's go start up the generator, warm it up. Here we go. Okay, now I've uh, got the generator on and have warmed it up properly. I'll just double check. Make sure that the main is on the, is off, everything in here my panel is off this is where i'm powering it through so i'm going to turn on the breaker so now we have power power to the house because when i had it open earlier i had the two the two poles the two hots coming in and then down below is feeding out through that tube underground into the house Okay, so now we're inside the house. Everything seems to be powered up. Um, on the big generator, all I have off is my AC or heat pump. Again, it would probably run it, but I'm breaking in this generator, so I don't want to tax it too much. Um, and also, being winter time, I have uh, a heat pump uh, that cools and heats down to 32 degrees outside and then my LP gas furnace will kick in so I've I've went to my thermostat and set set my heat to emergency heat so that it won't call for a heat pump which is turned off so but you, you'll see I, I've labeled with just uh, tape uh, G's that that would be the circuits that uh, I would run on the smaller generators the uh, 3100 watt champion and also the 4000 watt uh, RV generator. Again, those are only 30 amp, so they'll only feed one leg or one half of my panel. Now, uh, just to explain the panels, you have poles, but they're, they're offset. So this top bank, the two on the top, are coming from the, the, uh, the pole number one, shall we say, the, in the main panel, the left side feed coming in, and then it skips to the second pole. So, so it's every other one. So, I, with the smaller generators and only one leg working, I'd have use of the top, uh, the third, and the, the fourth on down. So, anyhow, I've labeled what to turn on uh, when using the small generators, but the large generator. If I've done my math correctly, um, it should run everything. Again, I can be judicious. Say in the summertime, I'll be cooling with the heat pump. So I'll cool with the heat pump 
and have the hot water heater which is electric off and then you know I'll cycle as I need if I need hot water then I turn the heat pump off and run the hot water heater um, and you know I do have everything but the the uh, heat pump turned on now but I will still be coming from an RV background with, with small generators and amperage service if I'm going to use the microwave I'll turn other things off um, so that, that's that's my strategy okay I uh, just uh, finished a couple hour run so now my new generac generator should be fully broken in um, and now the proper way back feeding the way I do um, would be to shut off the generator well first of all I in the front box I, I turn that breaker off that the uh, 50 amp RV plug is feeding into and then I'll I warm down the generator and then the when the generator is fully off and only then do then I disconnect the cables because as you can see this is the cable I was using that, that feeds into the front box a 50 amp uh, regular RV or stove range uh, input and then the other end is the 30 amp uh, input into the generator which is this 120 240 volt input here um, and I chose a, a hundred foot cable only because I wanted to keep the generator in the back by the shed where it's stored so that uh, it keeps the noise away from well me and and the neighbors and I run the cable to the edge of the house and then as you can see that the pole in the front there is where the the uh, well a 30 amp RV connection and also a 50 amp is what I'm using the big generator on now, I do have a an RV outlet here 30 amp that feeds that feeds to the RV and if I were using the RV generator to back feed I would take a cable and hook it into the generator output inside my basement here, right there. So I plug that in and I, I made a, a little suicide cable, they call it our pigtail, uh, which looks like this for the 30 amp, 120 volt. So see that would fit into a 30 amp RV and then the suicide part is a two male ends I call them whip cables as well that would plug in here and I could back feed through here so the whole thinking was to either use the my small generator the RV or the big generator but all from this back shed to keep the noise down um, so that's about it um, so now I have three generators to choose from in case of emergency uh, the RV uh, normally I park it full so I would have 54 gallons of gas to power power that generator uh, this Generac uh, 6500 watt generator holds I believe seven gallons of gas and then the small generator in the back there that's probably two and a half gallons so so I have days worth uh, of fuel on hand if I wasn't able to get any more in an emergency so that's how I do it again not recommended uh, I'm not recommending it to you it's not uh, code <laughs> not legal uh, but that's how I've chosen to do it being as my limited breaker box uh, expandability and uh, so that should do it thanks